coordinator, uh, linebackers coach Andrew Thacker. Rod, if you'd like to start us off, with Coach Thacker. You're you're facing a, a different type of offense this week. That, does that maybe have you take a look at the personnel you're going to use as opposed to the type of personnel you use at Northern Illinois? It will, it will be. It will be. Uh, it's nickel personnel and uh, third down package chaos personnel uh, versus Northern Illinois. So we'll have a bigger base. Um, we will, uh, um, for the defensive line portion, today's practice, the Tuesday practice is our most critical practice. Uh, it's our most physical practice. Uh, we simulated true cut blocks. We simulated slots uh, going for legs, which is what we'll face in the game. So uh, when we go in and have the opportunity to, uh, to watch the practice, the defensive line will be the most critical part to evaluate. They got the most realistic looks and guys that are the most disciplined, most dependable, play with their hands uh, the most. And then out on the perimeter, uh, obviously, you want to get uh, guys that are, are number one, uh, good with their hands, being able to play blocks, and then number two, great tacklers within this offense. And then uh, we all know that uh, what these double slot, uh, spread option, triple option offenses make you do is, is have the most disciplined guys out on the field. So more so than ever, um, talent will be a portion of the guys that we feel most confident on uh, Saturday, but it will be uh, de dependable guys with reliable eyes and uh, just uh, disciplined players that we'll, we'll put out there. And to your point, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we get uh, tacklers and, and block destruction guys out there. Andrew, I thought your defense played really well, especially in the second half until the last drive. It seemed like they went with tempo and you guys got caught in some substitutions and communication stuff. Yep. Kind of what was going on with, with some of that? It seemed like maybe guys weren't getting signals or can you put your finger on kind yep. of exactly what happened there? Yeah, a level of composure. So I'll go to your point. Um, obviously, we're all, uh, you know, we're all, we have human behavior. So we all have emotions about uh, the way Saturday's result ended. Uh, you gave a small, uh, uh, positive there, but uh, going into that last drive, uh, we had held them under 230 yards for the game. Uh, they hadn't scored in the second half. Uh, they scored 14 in the first half, and uh, we were able to go in at halftime. The guys were very composed. Uh, we went in, and uh, out of the 12 drives, seven or eight of them were three and outs, and we were seven of 10 on third down. So we were 70% on third downs as well going into that last drive. We had to go out there one more drive for two minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, the biggest thing Northern Illinois did, to their credit, they executed. On a P and 10 on an opener, uh, they motioned in and created a, a nice pass play. The quarterback threw an um, impromptu throw to the back shoulder, and it went for 38. So the biggest explosive play of the day was on the first play of the drive. After they got the first play on the drive, that allowed them then to go faster. And I think, to your point, it starts with leadership, but there was a level of composure that we needed to have uh, on that drive. There was a level of communication that was really strong the entire game and really strong in the preparation and uh, in a uh, – in a uh, critical situation that you try to simulate, you know, in, in as many practices and in many hostile environments and in training environments, uh, it's different in that moment. So uh, certainly a lesson for me, certainly a lesson for the guys. Even within that drive, it was a long series on the two minute. We got them to two separate third downs. We got them to third and 10 and they throw a check down to a tight end for one yard and we slip and fall on a coverage. That, that wasn't lack of composure. We, the football guy shot us down, you know, and it goes, we get them on a third and five, and they throw into a double coverage, and the, the young man makes a play, uh, and then certainly the level of composure on the last play that, did, that didn't go our way. So uh, to your point, uh, you talked about communication has to be at a higher level in those stressful environments, those stressful moments, just like when we played at a high level for a lot of those series. Okay. If I could follow up on that, um, like, can you explain, uh, like, with, you know, the lack of composure or how that kind of created problems and also like just given you know there's been a lot of uh you, you've explained a lot of us about how you know, the corners and safeties have met a lot together and it obviously it's a very veteran group just how much of a concern that is for you that that you know surfaced on the last uh, drive concern it's, it's it's another lesson it's not we'll, we'll get it fixed um uh, the kids have the message we we have a message as coaches and we try to train 18 to 22 year olds behaviors and responses but before we got there um the level of maturity that those guys have shown, it's, it's about how we respond right now. So there are learning lessons like there is in everything, but it, but in that moment right there. So concern, there's not. Uh, they're certainly hurt from uh, uh, not succeeding in that moment. You know, there's hurt from that one, but uh, there's not a level of concern that it's going to bleed into the future because we're going to take that lesson and move from it. Coach Thacker, just to follow up on that, I want to ask you a style question, really. How do you as the coordinator – School your guys this week. They really played a very good game with a couple brief exceptions, and yet that cost them the game. How do you walk that line where you correct their play 
and yet boost them up and maintain their confidence going forward. They really played very well. They just missed it by a hair, really, yeah, if you think yeah. about it. Uh, we're in a competitive profession. Um, I'll be blunt with you, we're in a competitive, well-compensated profession. And there's a lot of things that may look sexy to the outside, but when you're inside these walls, there, you, you, there's a big responsibility of a coach. And we've got a lot of young men that are underneath our purview. And uh, a lot of human emotions and a lot of human behavior go through that thing. Uh, a lot of young men care, and we all want to have success in life, and we all respond differently to failures. So um, there's, there's no certain blueprint. You know, We all err on the side of trying to be positive with these young men, but challenging them and holding them to a level of responsibility. So uh, you balance that line. Right? You, you can certainly, uh, in times of failure, you can break as a man. You can break kids um, that are forming habits as, as, as young adults. And uh, you, but you also can't tolerate things that are inexcusable in critical situations. And uh, unfortunately, we're not in the good person business. We're in performance business. You guys are certainly grading us off our performance. So we've got to make sure that we get our best guys out there with the, with the best mindset. So we make sure that we're very objective. I think emotional subjectivity happens a lot in practice. And we get after them and get after their tail. And today, we created a stressful environment out there because triple option brings an entire different element. But uh, when we get in the meeting room, uh, we really take the role of mentor and as adults and as father figure and as men and uh, we teach them how to handle failures. That's what it was for us. You know, that's, that's what it was for us. So although we had positive moments at the end of the day, our goal was to win and, and we didn't do that. So we, had, we teach them how to handle those moments and uh, I'm really, really excited. Um, uh, I'm really proud of, of the level of the response of the leaders of the room and they set the tone for the room to allow us as grown men to teach them how to uh, behave as a human. And they have the right response to get to the next game, to not let um, what was not a success bleed into the next week. And they've had a really, really good maturity to them. And I'm re really proud of them in that way. Did you learn anything in the game from your, your tackles and your defensive ends that perhaps you didn't pick up on in practice during the week? Uh, the defensive linemen? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. We had, we had so many. Um, <clears throat> when I say winning performances, I'm talking in terms of grades. We have a however many plays you, you play, not to insult your intelligence, you play 20 plays, you have 16 positive plays, 80% is a winning grade. So we had so many winning grades of guys doing the right thing. And um, we were able to um, not feel like I had to pressure or bring five or more through the course of the game because we were able to, for the most part, um, be in the correct gap, defend the runs because we played well up front. So guys that had, uh, it just happens that way. Guys that had good performances during fall camp, guys that had good, good week of preparation, multiple guys on the defensive line, they, they had winning performances um, on Saturday. So really, really proud of the growth and development and then the talent that's there. Okay. Um, you spent a year at, at Kennesaw State and I was hoping you could tell us a little about kind of your recollections and memories of that. Sure. And then also, does that, you know, inside gained into their offense will sort of benefit to that to provide sure. this week? Yeah, yeah. It's it's been some time. Three, three, five, six, five, six, six seasons ago, I had the opportunity. Five, five seasons. Yeah, six years d detached. Um, just an unbelievable amount of respect. Uh, Brian Bohan is the head coach, uh, coach here at Georgia Tech. I'm sure, many of you guys know him. Just a phenomenal man. I, I love working for him. Grant Chestnut is the offensive coordinator, and there's some other staff members that that, that I know there. So. Um, um, when we go, we'll be. I'm looking out at Bobby Dodd Stadium as I sit right now. When we go out there on Saturday, we're, we're all competitive, man, and we'll, we'll uh, um, friendships will be set aside, and, and we're all going to have the goal to, to go out there and, and win the game and be competitive and um, work against each other. But, but that being said, I just have a level of respect for those guys as men. They do a great job. They have a great culture of their program, and then certainly they have a unique scheme for, for most people through the course of the season. You, you defend. Um, Tra traditional football. It is non-traditional in what they do, so it makes you prepare in a different way, and uh, they execute at a high level. Uh, Coach Bohan and Coach Chestnut has been within the framework of that offense for years and years and years and years. So whatever you give them, defensive structure-wise, defensive uh, scheme-wise, they're going to have answers. They're going to have. Uh, uh, they're, they're going to be knowing what they're doing at, at a high level. Uh, insight. I, I, I don't have a playbook. I don't have a. I'm not over there stealing signals because I was, I was inside. I just have a framework of, of, of how they practice, of, of what their identity is, and what they're trying to do, and just a level of respect until we have a chance to go out there and, uh, and compete on Saturday. 
I thought Charlie probably played his best game since you guys have been here, and Tatum actually looked really good in a little bit of snaps he got. I was curious kind of your thoughts on their performances and if there'll be more, I guess, in this kind of game plan, the linebacker's a little more big. And then also Kevin Harris didn't play a ton. Was that – more about the schemes you were calling versus anything he was doing. Yeah, it was to answer your question. Uh, you talked about um, Charlie Thomas. I thought Charlie Thomas played at an elite level. I really did. The only thing that took away from Charlie Thomas's playing time is they got into a heavier package. And Charlie wasn't in our big package in that opportunity. That was, those were the plays where Chanelia Statham, a true freshman, had an opportunity to get 14 plays, I believe, to get his first taste. Uh, he earned that through good preparation. He came in in fall camp and earned that, had the opportunity to get his first taste of college football. Um, and then outside of that, we, we've got a very talented room. So Quez Jackson also got some reps that would go to Charlie Thomas. He played at an elite level, very proud of him. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll really look forward to him having a great season. Um, and then Kevin Harris, uh, we, uh, we have a very good depth chart in that room. So in that competitive uh, rush room, defensive end room, uh, Jordan Dominic had a bunch of reps. Um, Kyle Kennard had enough, a bunch of reps, and then Kevin Harris uh, will continue to be a big piece of what we do. And then on third down, uh, he was on uh, multiple third down packages. So we put him more on rush situations. I think he's going to have a great week of preparation moving forward and continue to gain confidence in the defense because the skill, the talent, and the care is there. And uh, we definitely look forward to, to using him moving forward at a higher rate. Um, who's, who's the scout team quarterback, and, and how have you tried to kind of prepare him? Yeah, for so, so we bounce that around a little bit. Um, um, I, I have been at times. I, I want to make sure they get the right look. They're, they're not going to tackle me, but, but I have been at times, go out there in my little cleats and just want to give a clean look, um, not to make it about me, but to make it about the right look. The, the biggest piece is um, – talk about this a lot, but for most schemes, there's three there's dive quarterback options. So I want to make sure that I know the defense and I know what they're trying to prepare for. So make sure that we get the clean look in those situations. Uh, and then we, we've got multiple young men that are there to doing those. I don't have a fancy story for you. I'm not Scott Frost out there doing it this week, or we don't have some uh, some running back coming over and running it for us. But we've got a collection of guys over there that are, it's more about the clean look than it is the, the cool story of the quarterback running around in circles. I guess last year was the only year you guys haven't faced a, a not triple option team just because of the, the way the schedule changed. But I, I was just curious, like, what have you learned over the years just kind of dealing with you played Navy, obviously, at Temple and Army, and, and then the Citadel here your first year? Just kind of what have you guys learned about defending yeah. that and obviously coaching in it? Yeah. Um, I, always try to, I always try to be honest with you guys and not be coach speak and cliche. But complex, not complicated. So what I mean complex is um, – what they would like for us to do is to sit into one front and one structure, and, and we're not going to do that. You know, I'm not giving away any game plan. I hope they hear that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope they chase ghosts if this gets to them. But we're, we're not going to be so complex that we confuse our kids because we're asking them to be really detailed in their assignment, really detailed in their technique. So we've got to be complex through their lens as they sit up in the press box, as they're on the sideline trying to make plays, but not complicated for our kids. And that's the biggest thing that it comes down to fundamentals. It really comes down to eye discipline, to playing with your hands and not being on the ground because they're going to be slots are going to be going for our legs, linemen are going to be cutting our legs out, and it comes down to tackling. Um, a level of composure and patience. Right? So we've been through a lot of these where um, if the game gets tight, if uh, there's any type of success, if uh, the game is close, then you on defense, you have this feeling that they're going to bleed the clock out and the offense is going to get out there and possessions are, uh, are gold for our offense. So just having a level of composure and falling back on our training, right? falling back on our level of training through the course of the week. So that composure piece, that patience piece, and then we will put guys out there. Again, I talked about a performance-based um, world that we're in. You know, we're in, college, we're in college football with college kids that are not compensated, but we're in a performance world, and that's where we need to meet, put our most dependable men out there in those moments and execute at a high level. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.